Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This time I'm going to be fitting the suspension to my bike which is a DNM USD 8, the gold version, uh, which I got from Australia actually for uh, about £330. Um, weirdly that was the cheapest one I could find, I got it off eBay. Um, so yeah, they look really good quality. So let's get into the video. Alright, let's have a look at what accessories you get. So this is the brake mount and obviously the owner's manual. Uh, it's going to slide out this way. Oh my goodness. Look at that! Wow! That is incredible! Then you've got these mud plates here and obviously the through axle. Those are the dual caliper mounts. This is the um, straight head tube, not the tapered one. The manual doesn't really tell you that much, um, apart from just telling you like what different things do and what rated pressures are and all that. But what I am going to do is attach the wheel first, because um, I think it will be easier whilst it's still on the ground rather than on the bike. And if you want to know how I make this wheel, then go and check my other video, which will be on the screen now. I've got an Allen key um, hole at one end. Now, I don't know what size it is, apart from a big one. Um, and I've got one that fits, um, and then you basically turn it anti-clockwise. Um, like so. You've got threads on the inside on one end. But yeah, also, I've attached the brake mount. Um, that's the orientation it goes on. Um, there's like a longer section which goes towards the stem. Right, so here's the little method that I've adopted for getting the wheel on. Um, so I've actually taken the um, bracket back off because it was getting in the way. So what you want to do is find the side with the threads on it, uh, which is this side for my case, and what I've done is laying it flat on the table but hanging over the edge. Um, if the wheel bumps into the table then just move it forward a bit and just weighted it down with a stator because why not. Um, another thing to note is that although these can twist independently, they can also move up and down and I found that's why I couldn't get in mine in. This one was slightly compressed. Um, you can see now that they're the same height, it slides in very smoothly. Okay, now for putting the wheel in, I've brought it forward just enough uh, to allow the wheel in, but not too much that it's going to fall over. So again, put the axle through just a little bit like so, just until it goes into the axle that side, and then guide it through the other side, and then again, it's a matter of just making sure each section is um, properly lined up, like so, and then it won't go in any further than that, so what you need to do is get your Allen key and turn it clockwise to get it into the threads on the other side, and it's important that you get it lined up so you don't cross the threads, um, and you just do that up nice and tight and uh, yeah, give the wheel a spin, nothing should be rubbing and uh, yeah, that's in successfully. And finally, you just need to do down the bolts uh, on each side just to secure it all in place. Right, so now it's time to get to work on my old bike removing the current front end. So I've got to loosen this uh, bolt on the handlebars. Now the bearings are in place, I'm just going to angle this so it's going in straight and then put this other cap on the other end and push it as far as you can because once you get to the very end you'll notice there's a gap between here and here um, and that needs to be compressed on basically by the weight of the bike or pushing down. So in order to be able to turn the bike back upright I'm going to loosely put this back on just to hold it in place and then just tighten down all the bolts this time because uh, we don't want this coming off just yet. So I've now managed to jack it up and <laughs> look at that, that is looking very very good and different. Um, and now that some pressure has been applied you can see that gap's closed and the gap's now moved to up here so now what I need to do is readjust the bolts on this and clamp this down. Um, now ideally I've seen people using like ratchet straps to compress this distance. Um, I don't think that'll be necessary but I'll put a little thing on the screen if that's what I ended up doing. Right, so that helped just using a um, bit of wood and a hammer to stop it scratching or anything. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll leave it at that for now, there's still a bit of a gap. So before I actually properly ride it, I'll um, use some ratchet straps or something. But for now, I just want to get the handlebars on and see what it's all going to look like. Here's a whole bunch of spaces and stuff um, that you can use to like add 
thickness and stuff. This is the nut that goes in the top like that just to cap it off. Um, and this goes at the bottom, I believe, just to make it look nice. So I'll see how many we're going to need and take it from there, basically. After a bit of looking around, I found that this some um, kind of dome cap thing actually needs to go underneath the bracket that goes on the top. So right at the bottom of the pile, then the bracket and then all the spaces and stuff. Um, I had it on the other way around to start with. Um, and then you can put the spaces on and then finally the handlebars. And these rubber bits here, I wonder what they were at first, but I think I know what they're for. I think they're to um, adjust how much lock you have. So you can see they're like a little can. They've got a um, raised bit there, so you can turn it uh, for how far you want this to turn. Obviously because of my enduro frame it kind of gets quite wide so you don't get a huge amount anyway but unless you're doing like a U-turn I think it's absolutely fine. Quite a nice feature using some rubber dampers rather than crashing into the metal. With the handlebars you've got see the handlebars themselves then you've got the little stem which is this bit here which basically mounts the two. Now normally on a bike it's actually the stem that um, holds the suspension in place Whereas because this is a double crown, you've got that bit I was just putting in place here, which holds it in place. So essentially all this has to do is um, hold in the uh, handlebars, which is nice. to take a bit of stress off them. Now as you can see, if I put them on, you've got loads of room. Now I'm probably going to start with it quite high up. I've got a whole bag of spacers. But if I want to, I'm a bit reluctant to, I can cut it down if I want to. You basically, basically you don't want too much sticking up because you could hit yourself on it or something. 